Okay, so up till now we've been talking about what a least squares filter looks like and how that is related to the Kalman filter, which is the next thing we're going to get to. And in order to understand that a little bit better, I got a little example here. And we've already seen that if we try and track a target that's moving in a straight line at a constant velocity, and our target motion model is a constant velocity model, we don't have a problem. Everything works fine and there are no issues. Now what we're going to do is we're going to take this same target, we're going to have it do a turn, an acceleration of 1g. I'm going to see what happens when we apply our standard constant velocity motion model. And what we find out is it doesn't work very well. That our target track is deviating quite a lot from truth. And the question is why is this happening? Okay, what can we do to solve this problem? Because obviously the problem is something that's going to happen a lot and, and we can't you know, exist with something like this. We have to find a solution. Well, let's look at what it is that's happening. What's happening is our estimates are way off. When the maneuver, before the maneuver starts, we're getting very accurate track, which is what we expect. But as soon as that maneuver starts, everything goes haywire. Our errors just grow tremendously. And the big problem that we can see here is that when we look at our measure of the consistency of the covariance matrix for this track, everything is becoming very inconsistent as soon as that maneuver starts. The reason that's happening is because with this least squares filter, the longer we track, the smaller our gains get. As our gains get smaller and smaller, we have less ability to respond to the measurements changing. And so the solution that we have to look for is some way of keeping these gains from getting smaller and smaller and smaller. Okay? And so what we saw was that during the turn, we get these large tracking errors that continue even after the turn has been completed. These errors are much, much larger than just the uniform measurement errors. The root mean square errors that we get from our simulation show that the errors are indeed very large, and they don't match what the covariance matrix in the filter shows. That's what we call an inconsistent filter, and that's when we talk about a filter diverging. In other words, the filter itself, it's not aware of its poor performance. It thinks it's doing fine, and it isn't. Now, I can go ahead and I can change the motion model, and I can make it a constant acceleration motion model, because I know that once I start to turn, that's a constant acceleration. But it still doesn't work. And it doesn't work because during the initial non-maneuver part, we have a constant acceleration. It's just zero. At this point, it changes. It's not constant. We're violating the assumption of our motion model. And again, we get large errors that come up once the maneuver starts. And the reason is that our constant acceleration model is trying to estimate acceleration. It did a great job out here. The estimated acceleration is zero. Now, the real acceleration jumps to 32 feet per second squared. And our error is 32 feet per second squared. We're not estimating at all. As a matter of fact, by the time the maneuver's over, we're still trying to estimate what the acceleration is incorrectly, and it's just taking a long time. Why? Again, our filter gains keep getting smaller and smaller and smaller. So again, what we need to do is we need to find a way that we can modify something in here to keep those gains from falling. Okay. That's where we get to the Kalman filter. The Kalman filter is a generalization of the least squares filter. We're going to add something called process noise, and this process noise is going to keep us from having those gains drop all the way to zero. And that's going to help us solve that problem. Uh, and so that's what we're going to be talking about when we get into the next section.